Hello, and welcome to my studio. In this program, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Now, if you haven't guessed already, uh, that is actually uh, just a column of smoke. Uh, and I used this uh, incense stick uh, to produce the smoke. OK, so this is just uh, attached to uh, the top of this stand uh, at a convenient height. Uh, I have a uh, black background. It's quite important to keep the background as dark as possible, um, black being very good, uh, because you want as much contrast in this as you can get, really. Uh, the smoke will appear um, white or uh, bluey white most of the time, uh, and therefore, uh, all the, uh, the colour uh, that you see in the, uh, in the final image uh, is produced in post-processing. Right, so coming further forward, uh, I have a, a digital full-frame SLR uh, with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on it. Uh, it also has a flash trigger on the top. Uh, and this is tethered uh, into this machine, uh, which is running uh, Capture One software. Uh, that will enable you to see all the images as they're captured. Right, well, to start with then, uh, I'll just light this incense stick and get it generating uh, some smoke. There we go. And that's going. Right. Now, I don't know whether you'll be able to make that out, but uh, we are getting a, a column of smoke coming off here. Um, obviously, with the airflow in this room, uh, it's uh, wobbling around a little, but eventually it will calm down uh, and you'll get a column which is just coming straight up. Uh, there is a lot of trial and error in this. Uh, in order to get this to, uh, uh, to work, you will have to take quite a lot of pictures uh, and then just pick uh, the best ones from it. Okay, so in order to, um, to capture this, uh, this smoke, uh, which, as you can probably tell uh, from the video here, um, is very hard to see, uh, you need to light it in the correct way. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, a Profoto B2 flash uh, to do my lighting. Uh, the modern equivalent would be a, a B10, I believe, a Profoto B10. But you can use uh, just a, a standard uh, flash gun that will do uh, basically the same job. Uh, this isn't particularly powerful. This is about uh, 250 joules, um, so about the same as um, three or four uh, normal standard flash guns that you would get uh, for uh, these type of cameras. So I'm going to show you the difference um, it makes, uh, whether you light it from behind, here somewhere, um, on the side, or on the front. So in order to get started, I'm going to actually just start from the side here. Now you may notice that on this I have a uh, reflector, uh, and that is uh, doing two jobs. One, it's concentrating the light into a, uh, a beam. Uh, and two, it's actually keeping quite a lot of it off the background and off the front element of the lens. Right, so we'll turn this on. There we go. Reassuring little bleep. Uh, and I've got this set so that it's at about the same height as uh, the part of the uh, smoke which I'll be capturing. OK. Uh, so I'll just check the focus point uh, on the camera here. Seems to be OK. Uh, and without turning the uh, flash trigger on, uh, I'll just take a, a, a test image. OK, so we should be able to see uh, just at the bottom of the frame here, uh, we have um, the actual uh, stick itself. Uh, can't see very much smoke, um, but 
don't forget this was taken without any flash uh, and at a uh, wide open aperture of 2.8. Uh, what we're actually looking for is the background here. If you watch these numbers at the top of the screen here, they represent the luminance value uh, at the point where the cursor is, somewhere between um, 0 and 256. 256 being white, 0 being black. So you can see from these uh, that this is uh, fairly dark. Uh, but we have the aperture open uh, to 2.8. So what that is actually telling you is that um, with the uh, ambient lighting as it is, we're not getting a great deal of uh, pollution, which is good. OK, so I will turn on the flash trigger. There we go. Uh, I'll just give that a bit of a test. Yeah, that fires. That's good. Um, I'll adjust the aperture down to a more reasonable um, f8. Uh, and we'll just take a, uh, take a test. And you can see from that that the, uh, the stick itself has been illuminated. There's very little smoke there uh, which is illuminated. At the moment, this flash uh, is on power 5. So we can adjust that up to a maximum of 10. So I'll just wind that up a little. Uh, so we'll go up to, we'll start off at uh, full energy and see how that goes. There we go. Uh, so we're getting uh, a smoke trail there. But that does look slightly out of focus to me. So we'll just adjust the uh, focus point on the camera. We're there. Give that another go. Yes. That's starting to work. Uh, one of the things that's uh, happening here is that because the uh, smoke itself is actually uh, taking up quite a distance, um, we need more depth of field. Uh, so I'll wind this up from 8 uh, to an aperture of, uh, what shall we pick, 16. Uh, I'll leave the power on full and we'll see what we get. There we go. It's better. Obviously it's a darker image but it is sharper. Uh, if I just zoom in a bit uh, and have a bit of a pan round, we can check that. Yes, that doesn't look too bad at all. Very ethereal which is what we're looking for, really. So that is with the flash coming from um, the side. Uh, so what I'll do now uh, is just move this round so that it's coming more online with, uh, with the camera, like so. I'll just to give that a test. Yeah, and you should be able to see that you, we have caught the smoke, uh, there's not a great deal of detail in that smoke, uh, but we've also caught the background. Uh, and there isn't much detail in the smoke uh, because the light is just bouncing straight off the front of it. Um, that won't give you a great deal of contrast. In order to increase the contrast, you need to increase the angle uh, that the light is hitting the smoke at. Uh, so if I just bring that round so it's more around the back here, like so, and we now have a go. There we go. Uh, you can see from this uh, that we've caught uh, an awful lot more of the smoke uh, than we had in the previous image. And uh, we've maintained uh, the background at a low level. However, uh, we've now got uh, this flare coming in from one side. Uh, so uh, hopefully you'll be able to see from that that if it's lit, if the smoke is lit uh, from slightly behind up to 90 degrees to the axis of the, the camera lens, 
then um, you're going to end up with a, a good deal of contrast, which is what you want. Um, so what I can do is just back this around slightly so that we attempt to lose the flare. Uh, and the other thing I want to do is try and get this as close as possible uh, without getting it in the frame. Uh, so I'll just have a look through the camera and just see how close we can get this without it being in the frame. That's just about on the edge. Let's try that. Oh, that is in the frame. <laughs> Move that back a bit. There we go. And I'll just give that uh, a test. There we are. That's very nice. OK. So again, just check the image, uh, just check it for focus. Uh, the little dots that you can see here uh, are actually dust which is in the air because doing things like this uh, with this sort of intensity of lighting uh, at the angle that we've got to the lens axis, uh, it will uh, tend to pick out any dust which is floating around in the room you're using. Uh, so that's just one part of the little job that you'll have to do in post uh, a little later. OK. So now that we've got all that set, uh, it just remains uh, to uh, take some pictures, probably quite a few, uh, in order to get some variation uh, in, the, uh, in the way the smoke is coming off the, uh, uh, off the stick. So, off we go. If you find that um, it is just going straight up in, in the air, uh, just giving you a, a fairly boring uh, image, uh, you can just disturb the air slightly, um, either wafting it or just put your fingers in uh, just to uh, disturb the way that the smoke is moving up. But basically, uh, you just need to take lots of pictures. So with the uh, images uh, captured, uh, what we can do now uh, is just go back, review what we've uh, got, uh, and then open those up uh, in Photoshop, and I'll show you the next stage uh, in the production process. OK, so this is the uh, image uh, opened up in Photoshop. Uh, and what I usually do to start with is just go down to the layers uh, and make a duplicate. Uh, that way you can always go back to your original without having to reload everything. Uh, with that uh, duplicate made, uh, what the next stage I would do is just adjust the um, levels, whoops, adjust the levels slightly, just to bring out uh, a little more detail. This is the uh, input level, which I'm just playing with here. So as I just wind this up, you should be able to see that the actual smoke itself is getting brighter. Uh, and what it's doing is just bringing up any other detail which happened to be there. So I'm going to leave that around here somewhere and just click on OK. Right, uh, now there's uh, probably some further editing that you could do just to get rid of some of these um, uh, dust spots which are floating around in the air. Um, one way to do that would be to add another layer, uh, but I'm going to come back to that uh, in a moment. The first thing I'm going to do is just add an adjustment layer for hue and saturation. Um, so with this, uh, we can um, just click on the colorize here and then change completely the color of the smoke. Uh, so for instance, we can go to um, any of the hues 
uh, which really take your fancy at this point in time. So I think something around there could be quite interesting. Uh, I might just increase the saturation a little. There we go. And I'll leave that at that point. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as moving the, uh, the lightness on this um, because you can degrade the background quite severely. Uh, for instance, if I just wind this up a little, you can see that I can colour all the background, which I don't really want to do. Uh, if anything, I want to take the background down a little. So I will just take that down ever so slightly, like so. OK, so then coming back to the layers, like I mentioned before, uh, we need to just get rid of some of these uh, dust spots. Uh, so in order to do that, I'll just add another layer. Uh, make sure that black is selected. Uh, then I will just pick my paintbrush. Oops, that's a bit big. Well, we'll give that a start. Uh, and basically all I'm going to do is just paint uh, some black uh, around the image just to get rid of the dust spots. So, uh, now there's a few in here which will require a smaller brush. So we'll just go down a bit, uh, increase the hardness, uh, and just go in and just take those out too, like that. There we go. Good. Uh, now, the other thing I'd like to do with this, because I can see that this is going to form quite a nice uh, image uh, if it's cropped co uh, correctly. Uh, so I'll just have a bit of a play with the cropping. Just clear that. Um. Yes, I think this is going to work quite well. In fact, um, I might just try a good old 16 to 9 ratio. And just pop that on there. Yes, that seems to work quite well. I think that works quite nicely. So I'll just click on OK. Uh, and we just clean up the, um, the edges a bit. Oh, actually, I've just noticed that that is actually very nice. I want to keep that, but it's very close to the bottom of the frame now. Uh, so let me just bin that crop. And we'll just do that again. So just move that around. go. A bit bigger. Yeah, that's quite nice. I quite like that. Uh, now, obviously, at this side, um, I have some blank space, but if you click on the content aware, that will just get filled in for you. So we'll just commit to that. So there we go, that looks uh, pretty good. Uh, I'm going to leave that one at that point, but obviously you could carry on playing, f playing with that uh, for some time uh, until you're, uh, you're happy with it. But it gives you an idea of just what you can do. And there you go. That's my interpretation of um, some uh, fine art smoke. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing that. Uh, and if you like seeing these sort of uh, videos, uh, just click on the other uh, images that are appearing on the screen now. Um, and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.